is our third day on the Big Island of Hawaii. After spending the last two days exploring the southern region of the island, we turned our sights north. For today's trip, we mapped out a route that would loop us through the northeast region of the island. We would start our loop at Waipio Valley and then work our way south along the coast, stopping off at the Hawaii Botanical Reserve, Akaka, and Rainbow Falls. We arrived at Waipio Valley early that morning. My flower is low. Ready? Waipio Valley lies 2,000 feet below the surrounding peaks and was once a residence of many Hawaiian ali'i. The floor is accessible to hikers and 4x4 vehicles via a 25% grade road, coincidentally one of the steepest in the U.S. Our little rental car wasn't up for the challenge, so we took in the views from the lookout above. After our stop in Waipio, we turned south towards Hilo. Along the way, we stumbled onto historic Laupahoehoe Beach. Meaning leaf of lava, the beach sits on a peninsula of lava rock and was once home to a bustling town, sugar plantation, shipping harbor, and was the site of a devastating 56-foot-high tsunami, which took the lives of 159 people in 1946. Leaving the rocky shores of Laupahoehoe Beach, we ventured further south along Highway 19 to Akaka Falls State Park. The park is home to its namesake, Akaka Falls, a 442-foot-high waterfall and a well-used footpath that weaves its way through the luscious rainforest below. Wetting our appetite for the rainforest, we traveled deeper south along the eastern Hawaiian coast to the Hawaii Tropical Bioreserve and Garden. This garden sits above beautiful Onomea Bay, which was once home to a fishing village and sugar plantation. The plantation was eventually abandoned and the rainforest soon reclaimed the region, erasing visible signs of human activity from the area. The forested area was later purchased and preserved by Dan Lukenhaus, a retiree who spent years clearing paths through the forest by hand to create a fantastical garden.
last stop of the day brought us to Rainbow Falls. This easy to access waterfall plunges 80 vertical feet over a naturally forming lava cave that was thought to be home to a powerful Hawaiian goddess. It was then time for the long trek back to Kona and the dry side of the island. The next day would be our fourth and final day on the Big Island. So far, we had covered the southern half and the northeastern quarter of the island. Today, we were completing the loop with a visit to the northwestern corridor. The plan was to drive an out and back loop starting at Pololu Valley and work our way back down the western coast towards Kona. Pololu, or Long Spear Valley, cuts into the side of the Koala Mountain and was once the site of taro farms. Today, it's a popular hiking destination with a winding trail that leads from the cliff's edge down to an expansive black sand beach. On the road, we headed south along the western Hawaiian coastline until we reached Lapakahi State Park. This archaeological site provides a glimpse into native Hawaiian life in the fishing village, which was thought to exist over 600 years ago. Mm -hmm. 